Hello everybody, my name is Stefan and I work in the Contentful Developer Relations team and today I want to talk about GraphQL. I'm developing websites for quite a while and I'm, I'm coming from a restful world, which usually means or meant that you had to make one HTTP call per resource, which easily meant that you had to make four, five, six requests to actually boot up your web application or to render your site. This all changes now with GraphQL because GraphQL allows you to fetch any resource you wish with a single HTTP, HTTP call. And at Contentful, we now have our GraphQL endpoint in beta, which I took as opportunity to show you how it works, um, what this GraphQL is about and how you can work with it. You will find the documentation about our GraphQL endpoint under contentful.com slash developer slash docs. And this is the documentation to it. The cool thing about GraphQL though, is that it comes with a defined schema, which means that you can develop web apps or websites without digging too much API docs. And I want to show you how this works. So what you see here is Code Sandbox. Code Sandbox is a fairly new editor, which allows you to write applications um, right in your browser. And what you see here is a React application. And this React application makes a request to our GraphQL endpoint. So in case you're not familiar with fetch, fetch is a fairly new method that is available cross browser that allows you to make HTTP requests. So you will find the documentation on MDN if you want to know more about this. And you see here that I'm making a fetch call against graphql.contentful.com, um, content, version, um, spaces, and I'm going for the environment master. So what you have to do first is you have to authorize the requests that are hitting our GraphQL endpoint um, with an access token. And you will find the definition to these here. And this is also part of the URL. And this is the only moment or the only time that I will go into the web of Contentful to see what data is in there. So let's just go here. I will find my space ID here, which I can paste here. And I'm also copying the um, API token. I put this one here. So what happens now is that we have the fetch call against our GraphQL endpoint. GraphQL endpoints, um, GraphQL works with the HTTP method post. I'm defining that uh, the content type should be JSON. And this is the authorization header. And then I have to define a query which goes into the payload of this request. Right now the query is empty and this is why we don't see any data here. So let's actually figure out what data is available for this space um, uh, with GraphQL. GraphQL has the big advantage that you can find out what is available with a little bit of tooling. So what you see here is graphical and this is a, a graphical interface that you will find for our endpoint under slash explore. And as GraphQL comes with a schema definition, you will find all the documentation that you need right inside of this interface. So you see there that the contentful space includes assets, of course, um, because there may be assets uploaded in contentful, then there are artists. So there's a single artist. And if I want to have a collection, an artist collection, a person, an album collection. So let's just start writing by our query. So what I can do now is I could now read all these kind of things. But also graphical comes with a really nifty auto completion so that I can just start typing and it will tell me what is available. I already saw on the application that I'm dealing with our albums. So let's just go album collection. Cool. And there's this total field available. And this is already our first GraphQL query. So nice. So we see there are three um, albums available. So let's just start querying these by calling items. And now I see that there's a title available. All right, so let's have a look. Cool. So what I don't need is total now anymore, which gives me the first album information that I can now paste right into my query here. And you see the first things are rendering. So what is actually going on? So we see here the fetch call, then we're um, saying, uh, we're defining that we're dealing with JSON here. Then I'm logging it to the console just in case I make an error and I can see what's going on. And then we're calling set state, which sets the state of the React application. And then it's defining albums as data album collection items. And this is exactly what the response was here. 
So let's have a quick look at the render function. So when we go to render, there is some error handling, which is not really important right now. So let's get rid of this. And then we see that we grab the albums and then there is a mapping and an iteration over these albums. And then it's just rendering some um, React um, templates here. So this doesn't look really correct here right now. So let's have a look what else is needed in this application. All right, so there's release here. Let's add this one. Let's see it's available. All right, it is, cool. Let's see if it works. Great, so let's add this to the query again. Paste, cool. Now we have already a release year here. So let's go on and we see that there's an album cover and which is accessed like cover URL. So this entry in Contentful has a reference to a certain um, asset. So let's also query this. So we have cover, okay, and URL, all right. And I also know that we need a description because images should have a proper alt text, all right. This is cool. So let's add this to our query. That looks already way better. And then there's only one tiny piece missing, which is the album artist. So this album has also a reference to another entry in Contentful. So we can also just use this. So let's try this one. Artist, okay. And then it is name, cool. Let's paste this in here. Boom. And now we just fetched all the data that this application needed without having a look at any API documentation because the tooling coming with GraphQL just told us what we need to know. The cool thing now is that, that I can also define different it's called person, different resources in case I want to include these in my query. So when I want to show now, I know that there are also persons we see there that I can just extend my query and can fetch all the data, persons and name, fetch all the data that I need um, right in a single query. You'll find also additional information on um, what filters, um, are available by using um, the schema definition on the right side. So we could now play around with filters and do some other cool things. But I think that this is good enough to show you which power comes with GraphQL. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will link this source code in the description below and see you next time.